OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, this is an OTAN presentation. I am your OTAN presenter and subject matter expert. Um, today, we're going to talk a lot about a program called Open for Anti-Racism. Before we get into that, um, my name is Diana Vera Alba. I'm your presenter today. I'm an OTAN subject matter expert. I'm also an ESL and OER coordinator at my district, San Diego College of Continuing Education. Today, our topic is OER 102 Intermediate. Um, we're going to be focusing on equity and inclusion by using OERs and we're going to, um, I'm going to share lots of resources with you. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been an online instructor and trainer since 2012. I have taught in the modalities of distance ed, hybrid, high flex as well, and online ESL courses. Uh, I've been an online faculty mentor uh, OER and CAPE coordinator and trainer at my district, uh, Canvas course design trainer, accessibility trainer, and here with you as an OTAN subject matter expert. I enjoy gardening, photography, and I love animals. So before we get started, I want to do a quick survey of your comfort level using OERs or just OERs in general. So type one, if you are not familiar with OERs, open educational resources. Type two, if you are somewhat familiar with OERs. And type three, if you are very familiar with OERs. Hi, Jennifer, thank you. Thank you, Rocio. Thank you, Karen. Okay, great. All right. This helps me keep the pace for you. And um, we will continue. So we'll look at our agenda for today. So we're going to learn or refresh your knowledge of equity and OER might be a new topic, combined new topic for you. So we're going to look at what does equity and OER look like? Why is equity and anti-racist teaching important? We're going to look at achieving equity, diversity, and inclusion with OERs. We'll look at OER and open pedagogy tools. Um, we're going to also look at how can OER support anti-racist teaching practice. So specifically, we're going to look at this excellent program created by uh, California Academic Senate called Open for Anti-Racism. And then we're going to look at their uh, Open for Anti-Racism template as well, which is a Creative Commons tool that you can use. So let's start by um, discussing what does equity and OER look like. So OERs are freely available learning materials that can be copied, edited, and shared to better serve all learners. Okay. Um, this this type of materials, these types of materials are renewable assignments. So meaning you can change them, you can update them, whether you created them or not. So maybe somebody let you uh, use their materials or you found some of these resources on many of the great open educational resource uh, repositories. So they're renewable, you can change them, you can modify them. Um, they are usually learner centered. So we they are created with the students in mind. Many of these resources are co-created or can be renewed and co-created between you and other faculty. So for example, I am um, revising an uh, OER book with my colleagues 
And in order for me to make things more equitable, um, I teach ESL, but I also am uh, ESL reading, but I also invited um, our reading instructor from ABE and high school subjects because I wanted that perspective in there. I wanted this book to be um, used by several departments. Um, so now we have some co-creators from um, different departments sharing in the creation of this textbook. Um, also, you can connect with others with these resources. Um, others can connect with you. That's one of the reasons why um, I decided to renew that book or um, revise the book. I connected with the original author. This original author um, is an OER advocate, and he was able to um, graciously share all of his other resources. So there's a great community, great connections to being made with open educational resources. So you are not alone. And then um, the five R's of open educational resources. So we should be able to revise, remix, reuse, redistribute these resources with our colleagues. Okay. So let's take a look at um, this site using OER and OEP for teaching learning. So throughout the presentation, we're going to look at various sites that offer um, great resources. Um, so this first site, um, there is a, like a professional development called Using OER and OEP for Teaching and Learning. So OER stands for Open Educational Resources. OEP stands for Open Educational Practices. So in this training, um, you will look at these various um, various topics. So understanding open educational resources and OEP is section one. Using OER is section two. Creating OER is section three. And using the open uh, educational practices is number four, OK? So this is a great resource um, for teaching and learning about OERs and integrated within this um, training is also uh, open for anti-racism and um, discussions on diversity. Okay, so um, at the end, I will share my slides and I have lots and lots of, I have three pages, I believe, or maybe four now of resources on this topic to share with you. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Thank you, Melinda. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, so why is equity and anti-racist teaching important? So since 2020, awareness of systematic racism in our society and educational systems, including teaching practices and instructional materials have been noticed. So this sparked an interest for change in education. So faculty want to make their classrooms anti-racist, but need more information and tools and a safe place to learn and implement these resources and these uh, teaching modalities. Um, OER and open pedagogy are tools that faculty can use in their classroom right now to make changes. So we're gonna look at some of those examples. So achieving equity, diversity, and inclusion with OERs. Um, so there is a college in California called College of the Canyons, and they were really um, at the forefront of this push on equity, diversity, and inclusion with the use of OERs. So they have lots and lots, if you Google their um, college, they have lots and lots of resources. So I'm, I have like a condensed version of what that is, but we'll take a look at um, their site as well. Um, so they um, created these resources on exploring how to use OER and open pedagogy to make instructional materials and teaching more anti-racist. Um, they looked at learning about anti-racist pedagogy, OER, and open pedagogy, and they facilitated an online course, created an online course for their faculty. 
Um, they developed and implemented an action plan in collaboration with students. So students were included in the de decision-making process of how their uh, courses going forward were going to, what they were going to look like. So that's also an important part of equity, diversity, diversity and inclusion, not only including everyone in the room, every faculty member, but also including the students. They have lots of voice. Um, they should have lots of voice in that implementation. Um, and then there were benefits from peer connections, monthly webinars, coaching, and just general OER support. Um, the documents that they used uh, were done via surveys, lots of surveys, lots of interviews, um, and mainly with students, right? Um, so the student voice and was very important to get outcomes that were representative of the student population and what their needs were. Okay, so that's a little bit of background on how this came about. So how can OER support anti-racist teaching? Again, start by introducing the topic of anti-racist teaching practice to students. Oh, because it is such a sensitive topic for all of us, um, it's important to create a safe, open space for discussion. And you will be surprised how much students are willing to share. Um, in my experience, because I did go through this training, it was more um, me as a faculty person unwilling to share or kind of afraid to share. Um, students, on the other hand, were so open to share. So it was it was like the roles were were reversed, and they encouraged me to share through their sharing. Um, it's important to look at assignments as anti-racist, being anti-racist. So some examples of anti-racist assignments that I've seen are research on significantly racially minoritized entrepreneurs. And that can go for, um, that can be used in almost any um, teaching topic or uh, department, right? So. Um, if if you're teaching ESL, I teach ESL, but if you're teaching ESL, this could be a writing assignment, a research assignment for students. If you're teaching ABE or high school subjects, it can also be part of their reading and writing. Um, so very great topic for many uh, departments that many departments can use. Um, another assignment I've seen is analyzing racially biased uh, marketing materials. That's, those are very prevalent and very easy to find. Um, so this can be also a writing assignment, a reading assignment, a speaking assignment. Um, if students, you want to practice presentations with students and their speaking skills, um, really great. Uh, and students really um, like this type of assignment where they um, get to speak and also speak about their voice um, and what they found. So um, those are just some examples of um, teaching practices and assignments that you can use. Um, so how can OERs support, support anti-racist teaching. So we're going to look at the Open for Anti-Racism uh, program that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's also an o Open for Anti-Racism template and um, the Open for Anti-Racism um, modules are also now in Canvas Commons. So I'm gonna show you how to search for those. So let's take a look at each of these. So the Open for Anti-Racism Racism program was co-led by um, California Colleges um, and the College of the Canyons that I mentioned. Um, this was created in the summer or presented in the summer uh, of 2022 or of 2020. Um, many institutions publish published statements decrying racism, calling for change, and putting equity into their strategic plans, but few express plans for changing teaching practices. So basically, everybody was aware, or many of these um, programs were aware, they just didn't know how to put it all together. So the College of the Canyons um, created this 
uh, OER and open pedagogy tools for us to use as educators. Um, so there's a little bit of information on participants, uh, colleges that have gone through the program. Um, I am part of Academic Senate at my district, and I'm also part of State Academic Senate. So I did contact um, our leaders at State Academic Senate and asked, um, is this available also to our adult education and continuing education programs? And they said, absolutely. So just because it's the program is housed in the State Academic Senate um, website, it doesn't mean it is not it is only for community colleges it's open to all so they said it's open to k through 12 adult education continuing education colleges and universities whoever want to use this program okay so um, there's information here on how to get involved um, so each of these are linked out there's a learning community of training modules and learning outcomes in the Canvas Commons. I'm going to show you um, what those look like. I downloaded them for, um, for our district, um, but I'm going to show you in Canvas Commons how you can download those modules. They are excellent uh, teaching materials. Um, there's also partners and advisors. Um, so there are lots of webinars. Again, this is mainly on the state academic actually all housed on the state academic website, academic Senate website, but it is open to all. It is not only for uh, uh, community colleges, it is open to all. Um, there's classroom action where you can meet faculty participants and get involved in their students with their students in making their classrooms anti-racist. So lots and lots of um, places for you to um, get training and also get feedback from others who have used this type of program or this program. Um, and then there's impact and research. So here what students and participating faculty had to say about their OFAR experience. Um, you can read and research some of their reports. Um, this is a one year program. So you can either go through the program yourself and you could be um, look through, look at the program, become a facilitator facilitator for your own district. But you can also apply for the OFAR program over uh, overview. These cohorts are one year cohorts right now they're in the 2022 2023 so if you're interested in 23 24 for the school year for fall 23 through spring of 24 make sure you click on this link here um, and they have not opened the applications yet, but they will be opening them very soon. They typically open as the last cohort is ending. Um, so within the next few weeks, um, you sh if you get on the interest list, you should get um, the information on applying as a district. But again, um, it, they, also, they are small co cohorts. They usually only choose uh, 10 to 15 districts. Um, so if you don't get into uh, the program through State Academic Senate, you can download and do a self-paced uh, training, which is what um, I did, because we applied and we, we weren't selected. But um, again, those modules are available in Canvas Commons. Um, and here is a video short video I'm going to show you about a little um, explains a little bit more about making classrooms anti-racist. Um, so let me make sure that I shared my sound now that I yep I did. So let me play this video and it's right under five minutes. Leading up to this, I have been trying to take advantage of trainings that the different schools I work at offer, like equitable grading practices and um, equitable sylla syllabi practices and curriculum and joining anti-racist task force. But I felt like what was missing was here's some concrete steps you can use and here's how we can help you do that. I have been doing 
um, equity work but way before we started talking about anti-racism in the form of anti-bias. And I, uh, I actually really like that we're calling it what it is now, anti-racism, because I think it's much more honest and transparent. The participants were in a four-week intensive asynchronous online course that Joy and I co-facilitated. And the culminating event was the, for them to create an action plan for the spring 2021 semester, because the idea was to take action right now and have impact right now. I know that there's own work to be done uh, and it has improved my knowledge, given me a louder voice to be able to move and be more intentional in this work. From the outset of the course, my co-developer and co-facilitator, Kim Gruy and I wanted to build a sense of community. We knew that discussing the topics of racism and anti-racism would require a great deal of vulnerability and it would require participants and facilitators alike to get comfortable with being uncomfortable quickly. You know, I think for, for me, especially teaching in rural California, teaching first generation immigrant students, uh, students who, you know, come from incredibly underserved and marginalized communities, like I knew that anti-racist pedagogy would only make my teaching better. Working in the California Community Colleges is astounding. Uh, there are over 100 community colleges. We serve over 2 million students a year, and 25% of all community college students in the U.S. Uh, attend one of our colleges. So if you want to make a change, boy, this is the place to do it. I am blown away by the opportunities our participants have identified to infuse anti-racism and open pedagogy in their courses. It's especially heartening to learn how many faculty have not only adopted OER, but really embraced OER by immediately revising existing texts to make them more anti-racist. I'm using a lot more of the students' voice in the class so that, you know, not only can they see themselves represented in the authors that I'm choosing, but they become the authors. This is a, it's a writing class. I need to let them know that they are the writers that other people can see and that that's, that's important. I didn't realize when I pulled together the readings that were all about, you know, these negative stereotypes for people of color, that only one of the articles was written by a person of color, right? I was looking for the credibility of the, of the publication and the, and the news outlet, but I wasn't really looking into the individuals. And so that's one of the steps that I've added. One of the questions that we were trying to answer with the OFAR program was can faculty use open pedagogy to make their classroom anti-racist? And is it possible to do that in all disciplines? What I was really excited about uh, personally was the open pedagogy part. It's basically instead of deciding, okay, this is your task, you do this for me, you get these points and that's it, that's the final transaction. It's more like, help me create the class, be part of the class, be connected to me and uh, know that you matter. You matter enough that I'm going to use your examples in the fall, which I'm going to totally do. So I'm really hoping to take a lot of the lessons that I've learned from OFAR as sort of how do I get more of my um, local faculty, and many of them are, are part-time or adjunct faculty, supported and involved. And, I, and I'll, I'll close by just saying too, like there's a, um, a kind of misnomer about anti-racist pedagogy, like what it really is. And sometimes that's controlled by people who are not interested in anti-racist pedagogy. So I, I view myself coming out of this program as that like I have the, the tools and the skill sets to engage in productive conversations around those issues and to, sh to show faculty what it really is and how it can make a difference in the lives of students. All right, um, any questions? Okay, um, Karen, you had a question affirming racial equity. No, I, I was just wondering if that, the rubric that the affirming racial equity, if that's part of this as well, um, just mm -hmm. wanted, and it is, okay, the, the rubric that mm -hmm. you can use to, okay, thank you. Yes, there are lots of rubrics. A really popular rubric right now is the POCR, P-O-C-R rubric. I have that in my um, 
resources at the end as well, so I can show that to you. But that's one of the um, one of the um, rubrics that my district has adopted, where we're looking at courses in Canvas, and they're in addition to the technology that's being used. Um, part of the poker process is also um, diversity, checking for diversity, checking for anti-racism. So yeah, yeah, there's lots of great rubrics out there. So, um, but yeah, I do have, um, do have some in my resource list that I'll look, that we'll look at. Any other questions so far? Okay. All right, so that first one we looked at was the page for open for anti-racism. Um, here is an open for anti-racism template. And all right, um, so this is in housed in OER Commons. And for those of you that are not aware, OER Commons is a great um, repository that houses lots and lots of open educational materials and um, including templates like this. Um, there are directions here on how to remix this template, which means how you can change the template. Um, it includes an action plan, a course description, and then um, a section for anti-racism assignment and modules. So basically, this is a template if you're interested in starting um, to include uh, open for anti-racism in your district, there is kind of like a lesson plan type of template. Um, and there's links here if you want to take a look at the program again um, and take a look at College of the Canyons and how they've used uh, this template. Um, there's lots of examples there as well. Okay. So I wanted to share that with you and that is here. And then um, the Canvas Commons open for anti-racism modules. So I'm not going to click here. I'm going to open it here. Um, so if you go, let me just go back. If you go to Canvas Commons, once you're logged into Canvas, if that's your LMS, um, they do house the training here. So all you have to do is search for open for anti-racism. And you have two different uh, versions. So the first version is a facilitated version. That is, um, once you go through the training, if you decide you want to provide this as professional development at your agency, there is a facilitator version, OK? The other version is a self-paced version, and that's the one that I downloaded into Canvas for our faculty um, that went through this. So there are self-paced modules that you can work individually or as a small group. Okay, so those are the two options for you. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I downloaded it for our faculty. Again, um, it was a small group, but um, I did download the self-paced and it's right here. And this is an open educational resource, so you can modify. So if there, once you go through it, if there is something that you want to remove or something that you want to add, you can do that because it is um, licensed as a open educational resource with the re least restrictive license, which is CC BY. Basically, you can revise, reuse, remix uh, this resource. Okay. So when I downloaded it, I went through it and I just kind of organized it a little bit more because I use at my district, we use um, a software um, that uh, was not included. So you'll see like this green bar here and some of these icons. That's um, the software that my district uses, but um, yours may not or will not have those, but you can organize it. Um, however you um, see fit. If you use H5P, for example, they have um, also some 
great tools. Um, so there's the home page um, that lists the objectives. There are actually five modules. There's a zero module. Actually, I believe I added the zero module. Um, and this, I just added a training schedule for our faculty when we were going to meet on the home page. And then um, there was, I added some help for um, enabling our Design Plus software uh, that we use at my district. Okay, so this was tailored to my district, um, but let's take a look at the modules. Okay, so again, I added this section um, for our faculty, um, and then the the um, actual training started in module one. It starts with what is anti-racism. There's an overview defining anti-racism, how to be an anti-racist, what is anti-racist pedagogy, culturally responsive pedagogy. There are quizzes, um, a reflection, a survey for feedback, and then a wrap up. Um, so the way that I used this with our small group, there were five of us that went through this. Um, we kind of went self, we met, um, I opened the, the module with an overview um, that then let everybody else go through each of the modules on their own for that uh, for a two week period. And then after two weeks, we met on Zoom and then we did the wrap up. We talked about, definitely talked about the reflection. Um, within these um, modules, there are lots of great resources and readings and videos. Um, so um, what we did is we went through the module on our own. Um, if somebody had time or wanted to, um, they went through some of the optional resources, but there are lots and lots of resources within the program as well. Um, so as a, I'll go through some of these, um, again, there are um, additional links, as you see here, um, lots of definitions, because initially, all of us that went through this, we we're like, okay, so, uh, it makes sense, but I need deeper definitions. So there's lots of definitions um, of the different terms uh, used. Every section has a video or two, and of course, the optional resources, um, some TED Talks, videos, um, also some additional readings, um, lots and lots of great resource, some slides. Um, and let me go back to the module section. Um, and then some, the example of a reflection. Uh, I'll show you here. It'll have the purpose, directions, and then grading. That's if you want it graded. We didn't really do grading, but we did look at the rubric so that we understood how to answer the questions and, you know, what a great uh, response would look like and would include. Um, but yeah, we didn't really grade ourselves. We were, we were actually going to become facilitators of this program, but instead of grading ourselves, we discussed it at our wrap up and, um, you know, how we would use this with our students, how would we, we would use this with our faculty and, and those types of conversations. Okay. Any questions on the modules? Okay. So again, if you use Canvas, this is open for all to download. I would um, download it into a sandbox uh, shell. Um, a blank shell, and then that way you could just kind of use either the whole entire thing or um, what it is that uh, you would want to use. Okay. All right. Let me go back. Okay, so we looked at all three of those uh, OER anti racist teaching practice. Uh, models. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at the resources. Um, 
for me, one of the, I'm, I'm very visual learner. And so images are really, really important to me. Um, each of these entries here are actually links, even though they don't look like links, they are links. Um, so there are lots of repositories now. Um, you know, the popular ones are Pixabay, Unsplash, Pixels, but there are actual um, repositories for um, students that are disabled to include um, pictures of students that are disabled in your slides and in your courses. Um, there's a gender spectrum collection of stock photos. Um, this is a great site called Nappy, and it has beautiful pictures of black and brown people. Um, so let's take a look at some of these. So let's start here at the top. Okay. And this site is called Disabled in Here. Um, these are all stock images. Um, they're open images, so you're able to download them and use them in your course or use them in your uh, presentation, include them in your Canvas account or your LMS. Um, there's information about um, they usually spotlight a student and there's information about that student. So I really like that um, part of this um, repository. So let's take a look at, so you could explore the images and also explore the stories, right? And that's really nice. I thought that would be something nice to share with students um, when you do use these. So here are some examples of images. So some of them are clip art or um, digital images like we see at the top, and some of them are real photographs. So if there's a photograph that you want to use, so for example, if I want to use this image, I would click on the image. There's a description here. You can download the photo here. And you can um, also credit the photo wherever it is that you place it. Okay. So that one is disabled and here. Um, the next one is uh, the gender spectrum collection. And this is also a nice site. There's information when you go in here, what you will see. And you can now some of these are not appropriate, right? If I, I probably wouldn't use a drinking one, but if I wanted to use something that didn't include drinking, I could um, just click on one of the pictures. And then um, here's the download uh, button here to the right. I can download the picture. And it gives me the download tools or the copy tools. And um, that is the site. And this, was, this one is called Vice, the Gender Spectrum Collection. Um, and then Nappy, I like this one as well. There's beautiful images in here of black and brown people. Um, they are free and open to use. Okay. So again, if I want to download this picture, um, it gives you the download information or the download button here. And then there's more information. If you want to add tags, it tells you that is part of the public domain. So any type of free resource that's part of the public domain, um, it's open and free of copyright. You do not have to um, attribute it. I always do. I always attribute pictures, even if they're or images, even if they're part of the public domain. Um, that way, if I ever want to use the picture again, I know exactly where I found it. Um, so, um, so you can do that as well, if you'd like. And that is this one is called nappy. Oops, 
me go back. Sorry, going through these too quickly. Yep. Okay, the next one is, I like this one a lot as well because it's through Flickr. It's Woman of Color in Tech. Um, so I like this because they are professional pictures. They are representative of professional women um, and men, but most mainly women of color in a professional setting. So I thought, wow, what a great way to um, display beautiful photographs um, in a in a non-traditional way. At traditional, they are traditional pictures, but we don't traditionally see pictures like this. We are seeing them now more than 10 years ago, but I like that um, they are displaying women in a professional setting. These do have a Creative Commons attribution. So let's say I wanted to use this photograph here. I can click on it. Um, I can share it. I can download it. I can star it. And the tags are here as well. Um, you can click here that it tells you what the uh, attribution is, and it's CC BY, which is the least restrictive Creative Commons license. So you can share this picture, you can remix it. Oh, sorry, let me go back. When you click here to the license, it tells you exactly what you can do with the picture. You can share it, you can adapt it, you can remix it, you can build upon it. You can even use it commercially. So if you're going to publish a book, um, you can add pictures from this site in your book and use that commercially without violating um, the author's uh, wishes. Okay. So that was WOC, Women of Color in Tech. Um, Anthro Illustrated offers free digital illustrations of diverse anthropologists for non-commercial use. So this has the CC by NC. So you can remix it, you can share it, you just can't make a profit or use it in a book where you're making a profit. And um, here is um, the homepage, a little bit of information about this site. Um, there's information about the team and uh, illustrations are here. So these are beautiful illustrations. And again, depicting students diverse uh, with diverse backgrounds. We see some that are ADA. We see um, students of different religions. We see a pregnant person here. Um, so lots of diversity. So if I wanted to use this picture, again, I can just click on it. I can right click and copy it. This one doesn't have the download feature, but I can still copy it. Um, just remember that these are CC by NC. Um, and the license is in their terms of use, um, but it was also, ah, here it is, Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial. So if you use one of those pictures, you can copy this uh, link and add it under the picture um, for attribution purposes. Okay, let's see is filtered out of SCOE, cannot use it. Okay. The effect, uh, Karen, are you referring to OFAR? Yeah, I'm just loving this. I, at the same time that you're doing this, I'm I'm mm -hmm. looking as well and probably sh I'm sure like all, all of us here. Uh, yeah, no, it just, for whatever reason, it was like, no, you cannot go to the site. So maybe not this minute, I'll try later. So, oh, okay. are you great. talking about o OFAR? Um, the the affect one. Oh, no, the, I was able to upload that into my Canvas sandbox, no oh, problem, okay. but the, um, no, the um, affect oh. pictures. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it depends on the district. Some of these may be right. blocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know why, but yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Um, it could be Karen, um, because I did notice like in um, one of the sites that we looked at, um, there were drinking pictures and some of the pictures, I think it was in the gender spectrum that we looked at. There were pictures of that one was fine. Drinking. I got onto that one fine. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Know. <laughs> Don't mm -hmm. know. But I, I have. It doesn't some... always make sense. <laughs> right. Some of the sites, um, one of the sites that I was looking at, and I can't remember which one it was, but there were beautiful pictures of models of women of women of color modeling, and some of them were modeling um, undergarments. So um, I'm sure at my district that would have been blocked at home. I was able to see it, and there was nothing showing. It was just like someone wearing a bathing suit. So there was nothing inappropriate showing but definitely I wouldn't use a picture like that in my class but I could see how if there were pictures like that then a district might say okay yeah. no to everything mm -hmm. yeah no yeah. it is good to have some censorship um mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. and then I can always right. like you said move around it later but anyways right I was just sharing sure sure thank you um we start to create. Oh, okay. So Picnoy is another um, site that has um, pictures of people of color, and they they talk about it here a little bit. How they noticed that there were not many images of people of color, so that's what they decided to focus on um, in their uh, site. Okay, and their license is here, CC BY, which is the least restrictive license. With this license, um, you can revise, remix, reuse, and also use these pictures commercially. So this is Picnoy. Okay, so it says all images are free. You can download their entire database for $59, but if you're just looking for individual pictures, you can. I forgot to mention all of these sites um, typically have also filters up here at the top. So if you're only looking for photos or places or um, objects, um, you can filter without having to go through every single picture. Um, so as you see, there's lots of beautiful pictures, adults, children, um, people doing sports, people dressed um, conservatively, um, casual photos. So lots and lots of pictures. So let's take a look at one of the pictures. I just chose one. Um, you can download the image um, by right-clicking. So this one does, this is one of the sites that doesn't have like a download button, um, but there are share buttons. Um, there are tags here, but you can definitely right click and download or copy the image. Okay. Um, oops. Let me go back. Okay. The last one on this list is Algo. They're stock photography featuring plus size office workers. Um, these are openly licensed, but not with a CC license. Um, so that's interesting. So they probably, um, let's take a look at it. Okay. So, oh, it's on Unsplash. Okay. So. Let's say I wanted to use this photo. So if you're familiar with um, Unsplash, this has the download feature. And once you download or once you choose download for free, it gives you the attribution here. So you could copy the attribution to add under the photo. The photo gets downloaded um, here on the left, uh, bottom left-hand side of your screen. Um, so that's nice that it gives you the attribution. You don't have to worry about ooh, which type of license is this. Um, you can just copy it and add it under your photo. Okay. Um, the next section are videos, and these are videos um, 
on diversity, equity, inclusion, how to create inclusive and accessible OER. Um, these are just an example of some videos. There are many of them out there, but these are videos that I um, particularly liked. Um, so designing OER with diversity in mind. So um, lots of choices there. And then um, articles uh, about OER. So if you're OER and diversity. So if you're just starting off in your district and um, you know, instructors are wondering why are we doing this or, you know, where did this come from or, or what is this all about? There are lots and lots of articles now. Um, the pandemic really um, brought about lots and lots of writing. Um, lots of educators were, were researching and doing writing and OERs were big. So was anti-racist anti uh, education. So there are lots and lots of um, articles out there on, on this topic. Okay, any questions? Um, so I did want to also share at my, thank you. I did also want to share, before I forget, let me share my slides. I wanted to share um, that at my district, we have, um, we, we're part of a, a community college. I teach on the non-credit side, but on the credit side, we do have, um, and within our district as well, we do have diversity and inclusion type of committees. Um, we also have LGBTQ communities. Um, so if you're thinking of creating or having these types of um, committees, um, I highly recommend that you also include students in, um, in the committees because I, that's just a excellent voice. Um, excellent voice to have in your committees. And there are articles here. Um, I included this one on supporting LGBTQ and inclusive teaching. And so some of these articles might give you ideas on how you can uh, create that type of committee um, and include students as well. Okay. Um, there was something I wanted to share. Oh, earlier, somebody asked me about the book. Were you referring to the book that I'm rewriting? I'm not sure who it was. It was Iwa. Can you put a link to the OER book you just showed? Were you referring to the book that I'm rewriting with my colleagues? If Iwa is still here. And you're muted, so I can't hear you. The one you were showing on our website. OK, <laughs> let me go back to the slides. Maybe that'll refresh me. Was that at the very beginning, Iwa? Yes, the one at the beginning. She, um, I think there was like three or four books. Do you remember? I think it was right after this slide. Um, Oops, let me make this smaller. I'm thinking it's like Friday afternoon and Diana's ready for her cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> like all of us. Right. And More we're like, like okay. Did, my brain is like, <laughs> wait, which one did, did we, I show? <laughs> right, what book was that? Did I even just talk about okay. anything book-wise? <laughs> it's all right, let I will me, find it. Yeah, let me share my slides with yeah, you. I think you went to a link uh, with the OER book. Um, okay, mm -hmm. let me. Um, okay, let me share my slides before I forget to do that. Because those are full of links. Um, but let. Okay, so can everybody open that? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure you have access to that. Okay, I have lots of links open. <laughs> uh, 
Um, oh, maybe it was in the College of the Canyons, the equity rubrics. Yeah, <laughs> like Netta. <laughs> okay. Um, yep. So let me give you this link to College of the Canyons. Um, as well, because they are the ones that started kind of, they didn't start it, but they really expanded on diversity and inclusion. Um, so let me give you their link. It's on my slides, but I want you to have it here as well. Okay, there's College of the Canyons and no, nope, these are not it. Okay, so hopefully, Iwa, um, if you don't find it, please feel free to email me. I'll add my email address here um, also. Thank you, Diana. I found it. It was on slide number seven, this one. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, so I added my um, my email address to chat if anybody's interested um, or has questions about OERs, please feel free to um, contact me and I will be happy to um, to share with you what I what I know. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to share with you, um, going back to Canvas, those of you that do use um, Canvas, if you go to the Commons and you type my name, so it's, oops, Diana Vera Alba, and it's hyphenated. So if you type my name, I have added, um, shared some resources with everybody um, on some lessons that I use, but the big one is this one here, OER for SDCCD. I created a OER Canvas account for our faculty that is a mini repository of lots and lots of um, educational resources that you can use in your classroom. Um, so if you, um, let me just show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like um, before you download it, but let me show you what it looks like. Um, oh, I'm here. Once you do download it, because <clears throat> it looks a little bit messy when you when you look look at it in Canvas. So I, I mean, in Canvas Commons. So I want to show you what it actually looks like. Let me show you the student view. Um, so the homepage has um, a video on how to use the site um, that I created with Monica Cueva, our um, technology coordinator extraordinaire. And there are quick access buttons here to go to the different modules. Um, so um, OER by discipline is um, a nice area to go to. There are tools presentations and videos on Creative Commons licenses, because I've done many presentations on Creative Commons licenses. I'm actually Creative Commons certified. Um, so I have lots of information about the licensing there. Same with attribution, how to find and use OERs, um, different large or OER repositories. So when you go to these sections, I have starred some. And the reason why I start them is I, those are my favorite go-to because faculty always ask me, which ones do you use the most? So I starred uh, the ones that I use the most, um, but there are many others that I that I use. I just um, didn't want to end up starring everything. <laughs> um, same with the large repositories. Um, OER Commons includes an adult education filter, so I really like um, that for us as adult educators. And then the OER by discipline starts here, and these are disciplines in at my district, and I, they're in alphabetical order. So I have child development, um, emeritus, um, ESL, and within ESL, lots of subcategories there. Tuha, I just thought of something. You and I should get together so I can include citizenship on here as well. Tuha is one of our 
ESL slash um, citizenship instructors. So maybe, hi, Tuha. You know what I did add on here? Tuha gave me this great game. I think it was Jeopardy Labs. Was that yours that you shared? That was a great resource. So in addition to open educational resources and zero textbook costs, I also included a section for free resources because some of these are not licensed OERs, but they are great resources to use in your classroom. Okay, so thank you for sharing that, Tuha. I remember when you came to my open office hours, you shared that. Um, so yes, yeah, so feel free to, um, if you like it, uh, like the site or Canvas shell, you can download that into your own Canvas shell. Um, whenever you download things like that from, from Commons, I always recommend that you download them into an empty shell because Otherwise, if you already created your beautiful Canvas shell, if it's already designed the way you like it and you download something new, um, especially a whole site like this, um, it might mess up your beautiful site and you'll have to rearrange things. So I always recommend that if you do find a whole course, like this is a whole course, that you download it into um, an empty shell or a sandbox. Mm-hmm. 